Hey all you lot and welcome to another episode of News You Might Have Missed. I'm your host Tom Lord and on this show we look at our mighty mix of eclectic excerpts ranging from news outlets, blogs and tabloid rags based around the globe. On today's show we've got Oxford boat race participants told not to enter the water due to E. coli bacteria. Shop chain 7-Eleven plans to sell hot dog flavoured water. And kids as young as 14 have been found making John Deere parts. But first, a man who stole 900 litres of sunflower oil is refused severance pay after being fired. According to RTL News, camera footage clearly showed how he used a forklift to drive a 900 litre barrel of sunflower oil from the company's warehouse to the loading and unloading location on a Sunday evening. He then drove the empty forklift back into the warehouse, returning with a pallet full of buckets of sauce. And the next day, the sunflower oil and sauce had disappeared. The company's own report said that the man admitted to the theft immediately, but it wasn't the case. At first he admitted to only darkening the source, and only when he was shown the images did he confess to stealing the sunflower oil, selling it to friends and family which earned him 1100 euros. But then the man still demands 75,000 euros for his dismissal. Whose family and friends are crying out for sunflower oil? iPads, diesel, cheese, yeah but oil? What are they doing, having some sort of family and friends slip and slide event? An award winning Finnish journalist admits in his biography that he partly made up articles. According to NOS, 68 year old Matti Kusela made that confession in his memoirs and as a result, hundreds of articles have been removed from the internet. The journalist himself had worked for the national newspaper Amaletti for decades and had won several prizes for his work. One of the made up articles describes a conversation with a Finnish poet which now appears to have never taken place. The biography says that he saw her but didn't dare to speak to her. And in a travel story from the Uzbek capital Tashkent, he said he was there with a photographer who took images of passing cars. He then described conversations with people in the cars, but it turns out that was all made up as well. The national newspaper has now decided to remove 551 articles of the former journalist and the three articles that are still out there have been edited and provided with comments. The Amaletti editor-in-chief said, This has no place in journalism. The public has the right to truthful information. Hey, look, we've all made little white lies to bolster the pages of history. I told my wife that I was the first to conquer Mount London and that in my culture, having a small winkle is considered quite alluring. A drunk driver has been caught after crashing into a sign asking to report impaired drivers. According to the Times columnist, the driver had already taken off by the time that police arrived. But escape was unlikely, since the debris left behind included one of the truck's license plates. West Shore Police say they discovered the down sign around 9.55 in the evening, after reports of an incident with a Dodge Ram. A witness told police the truck was travelling at high speed when it mounted the sidewalk and struck the sign but the driver had already driven away by the time the police arrived. But because they had his license plate, they spotted the truck, made a traffic stop and began an impaired driving investigation. And he was taken off the road just minutes after that report came in. No one ever crashes drunk into a pile of pillows, do they? Why can't they make everything out of pillows? Pillow cars, pillow signs, pillow people, pillow roads, pillow sky, pillow houses. I can see no fault in this plan. Fight me. Sperm whales have been found to drop a cloud of diarrhea to prevent an orca attack. According to Live Science, scientists witnessed the clever defence strategy unfold on Tuesday during a tourist excursion in Bremer Canyon. They described seeing a cloud of diarrhea permeate the water, and this helped the sperm whale pod escape what could have been a fatal attack by at least 30 killer whales. Jenna Tucker, a marine biologist with Ocean's Blueprint, said, It's called defence defecation. When the animals defecate, they pass their huge tails through their poop to drive away or confuse attackers. And because a sperm whale's diet consists of mostly squid, they actually have this really reddish coloured poo. Yeah, that would prevent me attacking someone. Now uncooler than a potential victim crapping their kecks just at the moment of knifing. It's like, do you even want to be stabbed? A rescued baby hedgehog turns out to be a hat bobble. According to BBC News, a wildlife rescue that took in what they thought was a baby hedgehog found it was actually caring for a bobble from a hat. The suspected hedgehog was brought to the Lower Moss Nature Reserve and Wildlife Hospital last week by a well-meaning rescuer. 
But on arrival, it was discovered the hoglet was in fact a faux furry friend. <laughs> The rescue place posted on social media a photo of the decorative ball showing it nestled in a box beside a bowl of food. <laughs> Look at that! Apparently though, even though it was a fake hoglet, it still got all the love, complete with some cosy TLC. <laughs> oh my god, you'd be, you'd be mortified, wouldn't you? Oh god. I almost feel sick from embarrassment. Famous gardener Alan Titchmarsh has had his trousers censored by North Korea. According to the BBC, North Korean state television channel Central TV aired a 2010 edition of Alan Titchmarsh's Gardening Secrets, but made sure the viewers could not see his jeans. Apparently jeans are seen as a symbol of Western imperialism in North Korea, and as such are banned. Alan said in a statement, I've never seen myself as a dangerous, subversive imperialist. I'm generally regarded as rather cosy and pretty harmless, so it's actually given me a bit of street cred. Apparently North Korea has rules prohibiting jeans that have been in place since the 1990s, but in recent years a crackdown has reiterated this ban, with a state-run newspaper telling citizens to reject bourgeoisie culture in favour of a superior socialist lifestyle. I for one am glad his trolleys are getting censored, but I'd go one step further and censor the whole show. No one needs to be subjected to the misery that is trying to grow plants, only to find out they're injured by the wrong sort of rain. Kids as young as 14 have been found making John Deere parts. According to NBC News, the company Tough Talk was fined nearly $300,000 for hiring 10 children. The Labour Department who were investigating didn't specify what work the children were actually doing, but an investigator said what they found in that manufacturing plant was astonishing. They said they found an environment that caused anxiety amongst their investigators and witnessed children as young as 14 working late at night at the 24-hour manufacturing facility amid power-driven equipment that was being moved around the plant. The general counsel for the company's owner said the child workers were temporary and were not hired directly and he said they used fake names and false credentials to obtain jobs through a temporary staffing agency and that Tough Talk is transitioning away from doing business with the staffing company. Only 14? I'm not even that shocked. I'm just shocked it's the US. And to be honest, if this was China, at 14 they'd already be retiring. Oxford boat race participants told not to enter the water due to E. coli bacteria. According to the BBC, rowers taking part in the 2024 boat race between Oxford and Cambridge have been told not to enter the Thames after high levels of E. coli were found. Boat crews have also been warned to cover blisters and wear footwear when getting in and out of the boat. Tests indicated the bacteria came from sewage directly discharged into the river, and E. coli can cause a range of conditions, including UTI infections, cystitis, intestinal infections, vomiting, and possibly blood poisoning. Good. And further to that, if you learn to row a boat in school, you deserve an infection. Do you know what my school sport was? Trying not to get pregnant at 15, and learning to lie on your CV as to where you're educated. I'm not bitter. A Dutch car thief leaves a note asking for more money next time. According to NOS, apparently the man steals things and in some cases uses the car and then returns it, but obviously without valuables, such as laptops and wallets. This thief named Polska has been terrorizing the village for a couple of weeks. And in one case, a woman took a shopping out of a car, forgot to lock the car and in the morning, the car was gone. But it turned out to be parked three blocks away. The car was locked nicely, but the keys and wallet inside were gone. And there was a note. Thanks for using Polska. Another time, Polska stole a laptop from a car. The note said, Hello, mister. I'm sorry for nothing. I give you laptop back next time. Leave some money in van for me. <laughs> kiss, kiss, Polska. Fair play for trying, but he could, of course, get a real job. Maybe work for a car insurance company. He's already got the required skills of robbing people. A Nigerian woman is being prosecuted because of a tomato paste review. According to RTL News, the woman asked on her Facebook page what followers thought of a can of tomato paste from the manufacturer Arisco Foods Limited because she thought it was too sweet. Her post received a response from the relative of the manufacturer saying, Stop slandering my brother's product. If you don't like it, use a different tomato paste instead of complaining on social media. Apparently the woman then responded by saying that she thought the tomato paste tasted like pure sugar. She was then arrested a week later. 
And according to CNN, Nigeria's police alleged the woman used her Facebook account to incite people against the company. And the police are said to have found convincing evidence of this. But what exactly the evidence was has not been revealed. And if found guilty, she could be jailed for up to three years or fined nearly 5,000 euros. The factory's founder then indicated that he would rather die than allow anyone to tarnish the image. I got arrested for doing a review once, but in my defense, what are you supposed to do with the sample toys in Ann Summers? Three out of five, angry staff really ruined the finish. Raw sewage being dumped in UK seas is causing cocaine fueled shrimp. According to The Independent, a marine biologist revealed raw sewage being dumped in the English Channel has left every marine species in the water full of cocaine, amphetamines and MDMA. Apparently these drugs could be changing the natural behaviour of some fish and changing whether they fight or flight from any danger they perceive. And Professor Alex Ford has been investigating the impact. He said, I was shocked when I saw the readings to be honest. So far we've tested crabs, shrimp, oysters, limpets, worms and seaweed. We thought cocaine would make the shrimp swim quicker but it's hard to compare to other creatures. And in another study, European eels were put in water containing a small dose of cocaine, similar to the amount found in rivers, for 50 days. They found the fish appeared hyperactive compared to eels that have not been kept in cocaine water. And the eel's muscle showed evidence of serious injury, including muscle breakdown and swelling, which had not healed 10 days after they were removed from the water. I don't know how I feel about raw sewage being dumped into seawater. On the one hand, turds floating by is a big no-no. On the other hand, a bit of whiz in the water might just make an open water swim a bit more invigorating. A US man has changed his name to literally anybody else in a bid for the presidential election. According to The Independent, Dustin E.B. 35 said he changed his name so he could express the dissatisfaction with the current presidential candidates, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. He said, it's not necessarily about me as a person, but it's about literally anybody else as an idea. There really should be some outlet for people like me who are just so fed up with the constant power grab between the two parties. That just has no benefit to the common person. Under state law, Mr. Eby needs 113,000 signatures from non-primary voters in Texas by May. And that's just to get his name on the ballot. He said, my hope is to have Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and then literally anybody else right underneath. And further said, we don't have a neither option on the ballot, and this kind of fills that role. Dude, if that works, I'm changing my name to HMRC. I could do with a few quid in checks right now, and uh, I do quite like shafting people. Unauthorised, non-recognisable £150,000 statue of Prince Philip to be removed after 10 years. According to The Guardian, a faceless sculpture of Prince Philip, once described by a council planner as possibly the poorest quality work ever submitted, will be taken down years after it was erected without planning permission. Called the Don, it was designed to commemorate his 35 years as Chancellor of Cambridge University, but the reception was savage, with one art critic describing it as detritus masquerading as public art. The £150,000 work has gathered so much controversy that no artist has admitted to making it, and despite planning permission being turned down, it's been standing outside Charterhouse office block in the city's centre, and Katie Thornborough, executive councillor for planning, said nobody apart from the wealthy property developer who commissioned it seems to have a good word to say about it. She further said, I'll be glad to see it gone, but remain angry that developers could just dump it in a place and then force the council to spend officers' time and money getting them to take it away. We deserve better. Look at this rubbish. I'm not being funny, but if that statue is Prince Philip, then the Washington Monument is a statue of Boris Johnson. It wouldn't be the first time someone's compared him to something long and thin. Lego has told California police not to put Lego heads on its mugshots. According to The Guardian, the Murrieta Police Department has been using Lego heads and emojis to cover people's faces in posts on social sites since at least 2023. But the altered photos went viral last week, prompting several news articles and later a request from Lego. The police department did this because of California law which limits the mugshots of people being shared on social media. A spokesperson said, The Murrieta Police Department prides itself in transparency, but also honours everyone's rights and protections as afforded by law. But on the 19th of March, the toy company Lego reached out and respectfully asked us to refrain from using their intellectual property within our social media content, which, of course, we understand and will comply with. In a further statement, they said, we're currently exploring other methods to continue publishing our content in a way that's engaging and interesting to our followers. Lego, come on, be cool. I think you're blowing this out of proportion. 
What's wrong with giving head to fugitives? Shop chain 7-Eleven has plans to sell hot dog flavoured water. According to KPTV, 7-Eleven says the hot dog flavoured water is a twist on one of its most beloved snacks, the Big Bite Hot Dog. The retailer has teamed up with beverage brand Miracle Seltzer to create a lineup of sparkling waters in four different flavours – lemon lime, green apple, sweet orange and hot dog. According to a news release, the Big Bite Hot Dog flavoured sparkling water is a liquefied version of the hot dog, including ketchup and mustard flavours. But the Big Bite Hot Dog sparkling water might be difficult to get your hands on, and 7-Eleven said more details on the availability will be revealed next month. Can people not just make normal stuff anymore? Why does it have to be meme stock? What next? Bong water flavoured crisps. And finally, a family returned from their holiday only to find a $78,000 phone usage bill. According to Phone Arena, under certain circumstances, T-Mobile charges subscribers as much as $15,000 a gigabyte for roaming. Apparently another person, a Reddit user, also ran up a bill of $250,000. He first ran up a sizable $31,000 bill of roaming charges while using his phone for seven hours. His carrier then raised his credit limit to $316,000, which he hit the next day. But it ended well. He said, fortunately, they were actually able to fix the underlying issue and remove the quarter million pound charge on my account. The gist is, if you're planning on going overseas, check with your carrier to see what charges you might face. Obviously. That's a bigger ripoff than Avanti West Coast wanted £140 for a train ticket to London. I'm just making the point, British trains are dear. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you do so fancy. Also, if you think there's any news that we might have missed, please get in contact on the email below. See you next time for another jam packed news you might have missed. Stay gravy.